well, I get a couple of minutes to introduce myself. And, and um, uh, I, I've never done one of these these short talks before, so um, if I get kind of a bit muddled up. That's the reason. <laughs> Um, but uh, but it's actually I, I really enjoyed the process of putting it together. I found I found it uh, quite instructive and quite interesting because for me it forces uh, it forced me to kind of try to contextualise things and to to give a, a sort of dimension or, or answer some questions through the talk or try to answer some questions through the talk. So so I kind of. I've sort of posed it around a question, really, and, and whether I answer the question or not is, is another matter. Um, I, and I'm really sorry, I, I honestly was here early, and I thought, well, I'm here early, I'll go and have a look at the cubes up at the mid part. And then I came back here and just drove around, I could not find the other mechanic building from Lovely. So, so I, I, do, I do like to arrive early, or at least on time for these things, but it wasn't the case. But. So, uh, so yeah, no, I'll, I, I'm just trying to answer a couple of questions and, and, and use my work and other people's work to, to, to illuminate that, and uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy it and find find out as much as I did by putting the slides together because it was genuinely an enlightening process. The question I suppose I asked, I was once told, and I, and I think it's an interesting theory, that, that that all art is either landscape based or figure based. So that really, what I was going to say. That, that with the way the way we understand the world, the way we look at the world, the way we feel about the world is either by the landscape around us or the way we relate to it as physical objects. So that, for example, here we've got somebody pitching up, picking up a cup and saucer, <coughs> and this is kind of about scale. The way I think about scale: small things you can pick up, large things that you can't pick up. The way you look at the larger world, and 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 of course you could say my background is in ceramics, and ceramics has a high level of, of anthropomorphization, you know, and, 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 and that's inevitable because you've got lips, you've got bellies, you've got jugs, you've got feet. And, and even this is a longshore culture, and these, these, are, these are very anthropomorphic. But what's wonderful about this, and I think it's something which people who work with their hands often pick up on, is that the spout detail on that longshore culture Chinese thing is, is the same detail that I've picked up on this jug that I've made. And we've both come to the same decision from totally different perspectives. And here's another example where I've been working on this teapot spout, and the teapot spout is uh, based really on this crab stock, this wood influence, or influence from the landscape, you could say, but also influenced by this, this 18th century ceramics uh, uh, form. And looking, the sort of, the, the journey I've taken, which is moved towards the landscape, looking at a bowl here where I've been looking at Mobius strips and then looking at the way the landscape works and how things wrap around things, how there's never a beginning and an end, I suppose, in, in the same way the globe has a continuous surface. Um, and, and these dishes were really a big leaping off where I changed, I suppose, in my own work from being something which is really figurative to really landscape-based. And you can see this Hockney uh, painting on the right here which shows how the lines of the landscape go round, they curve over the dish, and they create a, an animation um, and a dynamic, which you can't get any other way. You know, the curves are created by the curves of the lines going across them. And this step with a, with a piece that I did in the, the Cat Strand, um, which was the sort of really the idea behind it, was to explode that, the, the notion of the landscape on the dishes and to expose them. To, to, that idea of being a small person walking around the rim of the dish and imagining what I was like in the landscape. And here's another piece which is also using the rhythm in itself, which is in the hospital here, and using mapping as a, as a method of understanding the language. You can see here that blue area is the river nip, the red area is the map in the old ordnance survey map. And, uh, and what I was picking up on is the locations of the hospital that's been within Dumfries and bringing those locations. Um, to life again, so that black area here was where the hospital was in 1917 and so on. And now, it's very fast, this is quite surprising. <laughs> There's a piece here in the hospital that I did in Truro, and, and, and it starts to bring up the way that once you start working on a large scale, you can affect how people activate themselves in the landscape. The piece on the left, of course, is Richard Serra in 1972. And this brings up a kind of element of a lot of my recent projects, which, which has become a kind of fascination, is this idea of wayfinding. 
and, and you can see this brilliant signpost in Ireland where, where it's like a great example of wayfinding going gone wrong. And a lot of what, what I'm doing now, a lot of my bigger projects, there's a very, this is New South Glasgow Hospital, there's a very distinctive brief, which is that whatever I'm putting in has to have an element. So it's almost like you're making an artwork, but it's also about allowing people going back to allowing the figure, the person to orientate them in space. It's about mapping, it's about landscape, it's about orientation. Um, another thing, another, I suppose another approach or, or way I brought the landscape into my work is in a really concrete way by actually looking at the landscape around me and trying to use it as a direct reference point. Something John Aikenhead used to tell me when we used to write poetry in English at Coality was he says, you get stuck, lad, just do write about what you know, you know? And, and I think that's really true. If ever I got stuck in, I certainly advise my students, if you get stuck, do stuff about what you know. Don't try and invent stuff you don't know anything about. So here's these tiles, which were originally for a, a client in France, which are really just directly based on this idea of, of the, the landscape I know here. And then, I've been doing quite a lot of community projects recently, and, and these, are, these where we've been taking kids, school kids out from, from Ayrshire, South Ayrshire primary schools, and we've been looking at the landscape in a real way, picking flowers, pressing flowers, examining them, drawing them, and, and, and that kind of, and what was great about it is that, is that wonderful thing that, you know, what somebody said about teaching was, uh, uh, so long as I learn something and the kids have a good time all the other way around, you know? <laughs> And I kind of feel like that was what was great about that project. So we've been making these signs, which, which we're going to put to remember where the flowers were when the flowers were flowering through the winter. And then, of course, I'm doing another project in Wigtown, which is another way of looking at the landscape and trying to understand the distances involved. And these are two people, friends of mine from Greenland, or new friends of mine that I've discovered in Greenland, who collected a rock in Greenland that weighs the same as, as the geese that come from Greenland. And I've had people bringing rocks from Svalbard and Iceland and we're making these rocks and we're mounting the rocks so people can lift the rocks up and they can imagine the goose and there's a little bit of detail about what the rock is and where it's come from <coughs> and the idea is you pick and you lift up the rocks and you see the little arrow and you think that rock's gone 1765 kilometers from that direction. I'm finishing here back to the landscape. Here's a project I started. This is the first time I've ever shown this project. This project on my 40th, I had these crop marks tattooed on my chest, and, and the project was that I'm going to document every birthday I photograph that exact 100 millimeter, 100, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters square, and then I'm hopefully at the end I'm yet to persuade one of my children to take a photograph of the same bit when I'm dead that I have a document <laughs> of my kind of deterioration as a human being. And, and I quite like that kind of analytical way, and I suppose I've put that in just to bring it back to the figure that, you know, that that's, that I'm involved in both aspects, I suppose, in my current work with the landscape and the figure. So that, that's amazing. It's, it's like, it's a diff whole different experience there. <laughs>